Hello everybody and welcome back. I'm April May Walston and today I'm going to show you how I paint long haired animal fur. So stay tuned. So on this rock I started with my black background like I normally do but I decided I was going to airbrush uh, this design onto the background. So if you don't have an airbrush, you could just use any kind of stencil. Um, I could do a separate video on how I airbrush, but uh, you could use a hobby kit. I have an actual airbrush with a compressor, but a hobby kit would work really well too. Um, and they're pretty inexpensive. So I'm starting out, I generally always like to do the eyes first because they're what add character to your animal. So, uh, I, I like to start with the eyes and I did my trace and transfer I have a video showing how I do that and I'll link that up in the right hand corner plus I'll have a link to it in the description below to that to that particular video and now with the face on this little the picture said it was a collie it actually looks like a Sheltie to me um, and I had Shelties for years and that's just what it looked like to me. So I'm going to call it a Sheltie, even though it did say it was a Collie. And I, the face fur is smaller. So you're not going to have the brush strokes like you would on the long coat fur on the body. And what I do is I tend to paint in clumps and clusters a particular color. And then I will also... I'm putting in my base coat now and I'm using a raked brush which is really good for fur um, and not so much necessary on a subject that, that is this small and you'll see I think later on I go back to just a regular brush but if you're doing this on a canvas rake brushes work out really well if you combine a rake brush and like a detailed liner brush um, you really just can't go wrong with that combination now my rock it's kind of hard to tell my rock is really textured so I did kind of struggle with getting the fur right um, and plus I'm not used to doing animal portraits that are this small this is the first time I've ever done this uh, just trying to see if I could do it on a rock I think I would recommend a smoother surface rock if you're going to do this so you don't have to struggle quite as much. So like I said, I'm this is my base layer, my base coat. I really just need to get some paint on the canvas and uh, over that background. But I am using colors of paint that match the dog's coat, but we'll add detail in the next layer of paint. So I'm just working on the eyes there. So now that I've got the base coat in pretty much, now I'm going in with detail. And you see I'm using just straight titanium white and that's because I'm going to go in and I'm going to glaze color over it. So in the lighter areas, you're going to see that I'm just going to do all white and I'm see how I'm working in little clumps and clusters. And that what prevents the hair from looking like zombie hair. And see, I've gone down to a detailed brush and just using small little strokes of varying sizes and lengths and widths and direction too. You don't want all of your hair all following the exact same direction. You want some of them to kind of curve in and out a little bit. Definitely follow your reference photo. Definitely use a reference photo. Highly recommend reference photos. Um, don't try to paint from memory. That never works very well unless you've done them a hundred times. If you've painted that subject hundreds of times, then you can you can probably get away without a reference photo. Um, 
So I'm just continuing along. I'm following with what my reference photo shows and adding the little bit of detail. It's in the face and the eyes. And I'm using blue in my shadows and some of my on the fur on the white as opposed to gray because you know when you use gray it dulls things down but blue is a is a really good like little reference uh, reference uh, a good um, shadow color if it's on black it's a good highlight color so see now I've made a glaze kind of a bait a uh, tannish beige color and I'm going over pretty much everything with it. You're going to see it's going to lighten up the fur, but where it was white, it's going to be a lot lighter. And sometimes when you're when you're painting fur, it's kind of a back and forth. You're going to go, in my case, I'm going to go in and I'm going to lighten it all up by doing this glaze. And then I'm going to go back in and add some darker details. So now I'm going to go back in and start adding more of the darker details. And I'm still using kind of a glaze. Well, that's black, but in the brown areas, it's a glaze. See, like this is going to be more of a glaze. And the reason why I paint in glazes is because the way light refracts through the layers gives more depth to your painting. And even though we're painting on rocks, you could easily take all of these techniques and use them on a canvas. And it would actually be easier. I think when you, the larger you get, and it actually, for me, it just seems a lot easier. And I've done several pet portraits and uh, throughout my career and I found this to be rather difficult um, on this textured rock plus the size you it's harder to do detail and you know of course an animal's got a lot of detail you know especially when you're trying to make it look accurate like the the animal so now I'm going back in and I'm going with it looks like straight titanium white in some of the white areas. And I'm just continuing to go back and forth with a light layer, some glazing with darker colors, and then going back over with light, and then glazing with dark again. Just building the layers, tweaking uh, my colors, kind of tweaking the design until I'm happy with it. It took me about an hour and a half, I think an hour and 40 minutes to be exact, to paint this. So it does take a little bit longer. I'm always amazed at how long it actually does take me to paint something so small. Now we're glazing back over some more color. He had this hair that was hanging off of his ear that was kind of flipped the other direction. And originally I painted it in and then I decided to take it out because I thought it was distracting. So if you're ever doing pet portraits and you see something like that, I just take it out. Even though it doesn't match the photo exactly, it, it didn't add anything to the photo. So I just took it out because I found it to be distracting. And there we go. We are getting close to the end. A couple more little layers 
little minor adjustments. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit like and subscribe and make sure to ring that bell notification so you're notified when I upload my next video. I do have a commission piece coming up in the next couple of days that I have to start and it'll take me about a week to get it done. I will not be uploading as often. I try to upload every day, but my goal is at least three times a week. So I may only get three or four uploaded during the time when I'm doing them, uh, the commission piece. And then I'll be back on a more regular schedule once that's done. I don't do a lot of commission pieces because I'm trying to focus on my YouTube channel, but this is for a friend and I couldn't say no. So I'm more than happy to do it for her. It's an anniversary gift for her husband. So I'm looking forward to it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.